What's going on everyone, it's Justin here, and you guys might notice that I haven't filmed here in a while. I just realized it's only been one video in the last six months, but we're back here, and today I spent $6,766 on Apple's newest MacBook Pro in Canada after tax, and I'm gonna tell you if it's worth it, the state of the lineup, and whether or not it is powerful enough for video editing, and most importantly, if there's any major improvements in terms of performance from the previous generation. So for those who don't know, the Apple MacBook 15 inch has had three different models in the past year or so. I think around late July last year, I purchased a 2018 model that had the i9 processor paired with a six core processor. And later in 2018, they announced a model with Vega 16 and Vega 20 GPU options. And I was a little bit disappointed because I had just spent over $6,000 on the 2018 computer. But in 2019, just a couple weeks ago, Apple announced this computer and it still hasn't been a full year since the first 2018 model last year. The 2019 model for the most part doesn't have any major changes aside from a little bit on the inside as well as a common issue fix, which includes the Intel 9th generation processor, which in this case is an 8-core processor in this computer, which is the max spec option. This is the first time that an Apple laptop has had eight cores and the other major change is the keyboard. So the butterfly keyboard has been around for four generations now and Apple has made changes over the years, but there have still been some keyboard issues in terms of reliability and consistency. And even though I've never really used a keyboard on my computers, I've kind of used external ones for the most part. I did have some issues though with my 2016 Max keyboard with the spacebar being kind of weird, but Apple was very nice about replacing it with even the next generation model at the time. So when it comes to what I do on a Mac computer, it's no secret that I'm a huge Mac fanboy. I've had Macs since 2010, and I think I've had about 16 of them. I've tried pretty much every model in the desktop line, the laptop line, the Air, the Pro, the Mac Pro, and I'm very excited about the next generation Mac Pro that was just announced. I've been editing content in 4K for the past four years or so, and recently also added a RED to the workflow to edit RED RAW. So I do find on the video side, I am pushing the computer to its limit, doing a little bit of graphic stuff as well, but nothing too crazy in terms of after effects. For the most part, having a computer that is fast and reliable is extremely important to get videos out as fast as possible, but also do as many things to improve the episodes as much as I can in the time that I have. So the model that I have right here is essentially the top spec option with the Vega 20 GPU, four gigs of video RAM, as well as the Intel ninth generation eight core processor that can clock up to five gigahertz and has a base clock of 2.4. So when it comes to hardware, this computer is essentially exactly the same. It uses the same body, it has the same screen, and the keyboard has new material. And Apple does claim that it is more durable and reliable, but from my experience, I find that it feels pretty much the same for the most part. With the new membrane, it does feel a little bit tighter, but I think it's really gonna be a test of time to see whether or not there is a real improvement in this year's keyboard. Alongside the release of this computer though, Apple did also introduce a replacement program for the keyboards of all generations that have the butterfly keyboard, including this one. So of course, by far the biggest question of this computer is whether or not the performance is good enough or a big improvement from last year or the previous generations. And honestly, I will say there was an improvement, but definitely not as much as I expected or had hoped. But at the same time, it hasn't even been a full year when comparing to the one that I had previously. What I will say though is some of the biggest issues in performance of the previous generation have been fixed in this one. So if you guys remember, when Apple first released the 2018 computer with the six core processor for the first time, the i9, one of the biggest issues was thermal throttling. So what that essentially means is that the computer often runs below its base clock speed, which in that case was often under two gigahertz. And for a computer of that price with so many performance expectations and some great specs, it was kind of disappointing. Even though that computer took care of all my video editing needs for the most part, and it was relatively reliable, and I really did enjoy my experience with it, I did find a lot of times it definitely could have been more powerful, which had me very excited for the real large Mac Pro. The main reason why the computer thermal throttle is mostly attributed to the fact that the body is just so thin and there just isn't enough place for the air to flow or escape, which essentially means the processor has to throttle itself in order to prevent any dangerous levels of overheating where it might damage the entire computer. That was something that I definitely experienced a lot and most of the time I was using my computer as a desktop and I did take it on the go, but I was always hoping for kind of an improvement to be able to take advantage of the full capability of that processor. Before we move on though, I want to talk about a plugin that I personally use all the time for many, many years now on Final Cut Pro 10 as a video creator. It is from my friends over at Motion VFX and they have hundreds and hundreds of plugins to date made for Final Cut Pro 10 and many more. The newest plugin that they just released I think is one of their best and it is called M Film Look and it's a cinematic all-in-one plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. 
What I really like about it is that it has an on-screen control menu that is kind of a drop down with all of the tools that you're going to need as a filmmaker. It has color correction, grading, lens effects, all built in. You also have all the grading tools that I personally use a lot, including color temperature, being able to set your white balance with an eyedropper, your gamma levels, and you can also convert color spaces to like Rec. 709 if you're shooting in certain log footage. Some of the other plugins that are also built into the same M-Film look plugin, which include lens flares, and you also have the ability to set your letter boxes as well if you're doing like a 21 to 9 film. Another one that is also very handy, especially for me when I film desks and stuff, is fixing barrel distortions. So these lenses that I have are rather wide because my camera has a big crop factor, so a lot of times you might notice a little bit of distortion, especially in the middle of straight line objects. It's just an amazing all-in-one tool with all the effects that you could imagine as a filmmaker. Some of the other plugins that Motion VFX has is M Callouts, which you guys might see me use quite a bit. The blueprints that you saw earlier in this video are also from Motion VFX, and that plugin is called M Blueprint, and all it was was a drag and drop effect that just looks so cool. If you guys want to check out M Film Looks as well as all their other plugins, I'm going to leave a link down below, and I would like to thank them for sponsoring this video. What I will say though is that there's definitely improvement this year in the thermal throttling issue to the point where it doesn't really exist at all. From my testing in full load, it never really went below the clock speed of 2.4, which is the base for this computer, but I also didn't see it reach over 4 gigahertz very often. For the most part, I tried to keep my tests as real life as possible, so I edited a video that was full length, had all the effects of what I would have in typical review that was over 10 minutes in length, and saw the comparison between the two. And if you look at the numbers here, there isn't actually a huge improvement in the export time itself. I saw just about a 10% improvement in my comparison of a longer project which was 30 minutes compared to 26, and in a shorter project where there wasn't as many intensive effects but more of just a general 4K edit that was around 1.8 gigabytes, I saw an overall improvement of the 2019 model by about half a second. Where I did notice a bigger improvement though was when I was using Motion VFX to do M callouts where it used motion tracking to motion track the text, and in a 250 frame test this computer was able to complete it 20 seconds faster than the 2018 model. Other than that though, where I did notice more improvements is just general scrolling and doing some video editing, scrubbing the timeline. It was a little bit smoother, but I will say it isn't to the point where you should sell your 2018 computer and go ahead and purchase the 2019 model, but if you have a previous gen than that, then I think you'll be really happy with the upgrades. Another thing that I also observed is that this computer doesn't run as hot as the 2018 model, where I normally was used to seeing 100 degrees Celsius on my radar. This was only getting up to maybe 75, sometimes 80, which is also great to see. As for benchmarks for people who might want to know though, the 2018 model with a 560x graphics and the i9 6 core processor, it got a score around 23,000 for multi-core and 5,587 for single core, whereas the 2019 model broke 30,000 in the multi-core, which is very impressive for a laptop, and had a single core score of 5,864. So when it comes to pricing, the base MacBook Pro for 2019 still starts at $2,399 in the US, and this gets you a 6-core i9 9th gen processor with 256 gigs of storage and 16 gigs of RAM. You also get the AMD Radeon 555X, and if you go up to the upgraded model of $2,799 starting price, you get the 8-core processor standard with 2.3 GHz base clock and 4.8 max, as well as a 560X GPU, and when it comes to the upgrades, you have many options here in terms of specs. For $200, you can get your clock speed up to 2.4 GHz and a max of 5, so a very small upgrade in terms of clock. And for $250, you can go up to a Vega 16, and for $350, you can go up to a Vega 20 GPU. $400 gets you double the RAM, and it comes with a base option of 512 gigs of SSD storage. Honestly though, when you look at the upgrades, whether it's a double storage, the 8-core processor, or the GPU, I believe that the price jump from the $2399 to the $2799 model is actually a very good option to go with. If you do a lot of graphics stuff, I think the Vega processors are worth it, but when it comes to the clock speed and the processor options, I think you would rather spend that money on some other upgrades as opposed to that. Because of the spec options of this computer, my price was already ran up pretty high, so I decided to just go with all the upgrades possible because it just sort of made sense to spend the extra money here and there. And that is how in Canada, after tax, this model added up to $6,766 in total. So I think to conclude, the 2019 model is essentially a marginal spec upgrade that we kind of see every year during the lineup cycle. You have the 9th gen processor that has 8 cores as well as a Vega 20, 32 gigs of RAM and super fast storage and they've also seemingly fixed the keyboard issue. And the computer is still incredibly beautiful and easy to carry around and still offers a lot of power. But as someone who sold my 2018 model and purchased a 2019 for almost $7,000 in Canada, I really don't feel like I've got my money's worth with that type of upgrade. If you're coming from a previous generation though and really need a new computer, then I think this one is going to be one that you're going to be very satisfied with. 
I think at this point though, especially with the last two generations, it's very clear that an upgrade for the hardware is eminent. And that is a new design, better thermals, maybe a little bit thicker body to be able to ventilate the air a little bit better, or just kind of a re-engineered system for these new processors that are just so powerful and do give out a lot of heat. The 16 inch MacBook has been rumored and I'm very excited for that to see the bezel-less design and everything. And I think that is rumored for 2020 or 2021. So you still have a little bit of time to wait. So if you really need a computer, then this one is going to be your option. But if you can wait, if the new Mac Pro that was announced yesterday was any indication to Apple's focus on thermals and maximize performance, then that is something to keep in mind. And I'm very excited for that redesign. Otherwise, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like and I'll see you all in the next video.